So tomorrow is September 10th. It is the um, World Suicide Prevention Day. And I thought I would do my part and make this video. Uh, I figured I would make a video instead of writing a blog post because I wouldn't have to <laughs> erase things um, and do over. It would just be one take putting out there. Um, this is for people who are struggling now um, and thinking that are they're alone. Uh, they're not. So maybe my story will help them. And I actually have never told anyone about this story. I mean, some people obviously know, but they don't know the detail. No one knows the detail. So, all right. Um, hmm. So I'll set it up. Uh, last semester of college, 1995, working 30 hours a week, typical for Holly, um, taking, I think, either 16 or 18 credits because I wanted to graduate in four years. It was really important to me. And on February 11th, 1995, <sighs> damn, I don't think I can get through this. Um, I'm just going to go through it. Screw it. Uh, my world changed. My best friend, one of my best friends, Sarah, died in a whiteout um, in Canada. <laughs> and it's funny because... We were supposed to hang out. I was supposed to go back to Albany. I was in Rochester, New York. And I was supposed to go to Albany that weekend. And she told me not to go because she had to go to a wedding. Uh, she was really big on Valentine's Day. And so Valentine's was coming up. And she told me to just come back home, even though my family was living in Hilton Head at that time, to come back home to Albany the following weekend. And we would hang out. We were starting to put our plans together for the summer because, um, I don't know, we were just ready to travel somewhere. And so we were starting to think about where we would go. Uh, so anyway, I was living off campus and um, when she died, I was actually on campus, hanging out with some friends, um, and spent the night on campus. And I can remember, like it's yesterday, um, coming home to my apartment, and my roommate knew what had happened. Uh, and she just said to me that, you know, I want you to just sit down. You need to call your friend... Eileen and her family, they need to talk to you. And so I did. Um, and I don't even know who told me. I think it was her mom. But I remember the feeling. I remember crawling to the ground. Um, I just remember, like in a fetal position, just being told and my world just feeling like it had ended, like I had died. And I just laid on the ground in the kitchen and I was just inconsolable. Um, and at that point, everybody didn't want me to drive home because from Rochester to Albany is probably like, I don't know, three and a half, four hour trip. So I first had to call my parents uh, this is before cell phones, to let them know what had happened. And so I called my parents, 
They were in Hilton Head again. And I left a message. God only knows what I had said. Um, again, I, I was so incoherent. And then I called one friend who went to Nazareth and also went to Don Stewart to see if he could drive me home. And he couldn't. And then I reached out to my old roommate, TK, and she was like, whatever you need. Um, we'll just get in the car and we'll go. You know, I'll, I'll let my teachers know that I'm just going to be gone. I had let my teachers know what had happened in work. So my parents called. And again, like, like this is, I can close my eyes and I see this. And my parents thought my sister had died because I was so, in, like, incoherent. All they could hear is died, died. And I finally told them. And my dad was, like, hysterical. Like, I never heard my dad cry before. And he was just, not Sarah, not Sarah. Like, you know, she'd spent a lot of time in Hilton Head with us. And we went to Czechoslovakia or Czech Republic together. With my dad, who gave him such a fucking hard time. Poor guy. And so he was just, he was just, my mom said, on his knees, just hysterical crying over Sarah. And so I vaguely remember the car trip. But I remember by the time we got to, to New York that my parent, my mom, we were, DK and I picked my mom at the airport. So mind you, I'm like in Rochester, we drove across the state, and by the time we did that, which is like not very long at all, my mom flew from Hilton Head. I can remember her just being in like a tracksuit, hysterical crying, and um, yeah, we, we went to uh, Sarah's mom's house and everybody was there and it was really sad it was so surreal and like our closest friend Eileen and I we just couldn't even really talk because it was just too painful it was like our third amigo was gone and so, I don't know, that week is very blurry. I just remember us figuring out who was going to do what music. I decided that I wanted to do the eulogy for our memorial service. And so, I just remember, you know, having a hard time writing about it. Because we had a lot of fun times and like... A lot of times that probably shouldn't be shared uh, at our old school's um, chapel. So, but, you know, all is well. But, you know, I wrote the eulogy. And I remember that morning going into the chapel. And us, and me sitting down in the pew that her and I, Sarah and I sat down at. When um, we found out that our, our dads were uh, having extramarital affairs. We found out around the same time, like weeks apart. And so I remember we were upset about it. And so we sat in this, this pew and we were commiserating about it, what the other father had done. And so I sat down in that pew, that same pew, and I just prayed to her, saying to give me strength to get through this because, I mean, it's what, 2013, 14, whatever, and I'm still distraught. So you can imagine at that time, like, just how bad it was. So, but I gave the eulogy, and it was funny, and... Hopefully, 
shared light and how fucking awesome that broad was. And I remember after, Pammy and I, her mom, uh, we went outside and we smoked cigarettes. It would have been something that Sarah and I would have done, you know? Probably some American cig spirit cigarettes. And we were laughing because some of the brownies that were at the reception had pot in them and like you know some people were gonna get high during the reception ah, and we just you know like very it's funny you know just it would have been a very funny Sarah thing um yeah so then I remember going back to school so this is February um I remember going back to school, but then it was all a blur. It was all very, it's all very much a blur. I went down a very, very, very um, black hole quickly. So, but I still worked. So on the outside, you know, and again, this is suicide prevention. Um, I probably didn't look any different. I probably was still a wise ass laughing. I didn't miss any work. Um, I didn't miss any school. I just went about my business. I probably wasn't like cheery go lucky. Um, but you know, I, I, uh, I don't think anybody probably knew what was going on and I didn't let anything, I didn't let anybody know what was going on. But yeah, I was, I was extremely depressed. Um, I was pissed. I was pissed at God for taking my friend. Uh, I was sad that I was left without her and that, you know, I, I, my world had changed and I didn't, I just didn't know how to go on. And so I just continued to go down this down, downward spiral. Um, so about a month before school ended, literally a month, because there was a, uh, a um, 30 day before school ends dance. I just remembered I had, I had had it. Um, and I remember getting, this I remember, like, I don't remember the progression. I remember it beginning very sad and very, um, uh, internalized. But I do recall, I recall knowing that it was time for me to, to try to kill myself. I remember getting the wine. It was Boone's. What can I say? I was cheap. I remember getting a couple of packets of sleeping pills. I remember making a tape instead of a letter. You know, that just was my thing. I, you know, even technology back then. Um, you know, I remember the steps. And I remember thinking myself... First of all, nobody probably would have known what was going on because I didn't, I didn't, um, my parents were in Hilton Head. My sister was in Albany. You know, I was living with a roommate that really didn't know me. Like the close people didn't see me. Um, anyway, so I, I have this plan and it weighed really fucking hard on me because the two people that I was, didn't want to, I just, I had like regret about was my nephews, my boys. I was going to leave them without protection. I mean, not, I know they have parents, but like, those are my boys. And yeah, I was going to leave them. And man, that weighed hard. It weighed really fucking hard. But I, I just wanted it to end. And so 
So I laid on my bed. I finished my tape. And I took all the shit. Took it all. And I can remember almost going to a trance. Like I could feel my body, uh, the, the collection or whatever. Um, I could feel it taking control and my body getting heavy. And I thought, well, this is it. I'm going to be, I'm going to be with the Sarah. That's where I want to be. Now, I don't know how long I was out for. I, I, I can't tell you. I, I don't remember. I do recall waking up to my roommate hanging over me. And she must have found my paraphernalia, the, the sleeping pills, the, the, the wine. I don't think she found the tape. Nobody ever found the tape. I got rid of it. Um, but she didn't know what I had done. And so she, I guess, put me into the loony bin. I, I really don't remember how I got there. I just, I was, first of all, I was pissed that I was still alive. She was hanging over me. I was so fucking mad. I wanted to be dead. And I know that's bad to say because, you know, like God's giving you this, uh, you know, gift, you're still alive. But I was pissed at that point. And so I remember her, I don't, I don't know. I somehow ended up at the loony bin. I ended up at the, or the county mental ward, whatever you want to call it. It was a fucking loony bin. And I remember being wheeled in on a wheelchair. I was very out of it because obviously, you know, I was like, Frickin' Rip Van Winkle or whoever. Sleeping for how many days? And somebody must have called my sister. I guess she must have called my sister. Again, this is before cell phones or anything. Because my sister, uh, when they were admitting me, came. And man, she was pissed. She was very mad at me. She just said, how could you do this? You have everything. How could you do this? And I just didn't know what to say. You know, I was just, again, I was just angry. Like, why am I here? And so I got put in the, the loony bin, which sucks, right? Because, well, you don't know. Um, like you lose all rights. You lose your, you lose your shampoo, uh, toothpaste, cigarettes, you lose it all because they're afraid you're going to do harm. And I probably would have. So, you know, razors, you can't sh shave your freaking legs, whatever. Um, and you're in there with crazy people. I was just depressed. My, my best friend had died, you know, but you were in there with like lunatics. I had a roommate who was like an old woman who would scream in the middle of the night and just start screaming. She woke me up. I had to tell the nurses. I'm like, look, I am just depressed over my best friend. This bitch is crazy. I need my own room or someone else that's just less crazy than her. And so they moved me in with a drug addict because, again, it's a county ward. You got drug addicts and Looney Tunes and people like me that are, you know, trying to kill themselves. Um, I do remember my parents coming. They were very upset. And then I was kind of in lockdown. I was in lockdown. I couldn't get calls for about a week. Um, and then I remember some friends coming. Um, lots of friends calling. Just to see that I was okay. And then... I got asked, I was able to leave the loony bin, the county ward. I don't know why I'm laughing. It's just nervous laugh. If my parents took me home and I was admitted into an outpatient uh, at home. So I went to an outpatient unit in Savannah, Georgia, which was the closest one. And so for, oh gosh, I think it was like three months, 
I was in an outpatient. So every day I would go to this outpatient and I would talk about my feelings. My parents wouldn't leave me alone because they were afraid I was going to kill myself. And, you know, I don't know. It was, it was tough. But then I kind of came out of that fog. Um, God, I was angry at God. I do remember that. I was angry at God for making me live. I was angry that she was dead. I was angry for a long time at God for both of those things. But I got out of it. And... Obviously, I'm happy that I got out of it. I, you know, my boys, I'm still protecting them. I'll protect them till I die. I mean, and maybe that's why God's, I mean, I know God saved me for many reasons, but there are two of them. And I'm happy because I have Sarah, I have all these life experiences, but I'm, did this video and I've been wanting to do this video especially since Robin Williams because I don't want people to think that they're alone and that you know they have to hide there's nothing to hide from people get depressed people think of suicide and like if you're like me no one knew because I'm a great actress, you know, or my, I'm not close. I wasn't living close to my family. And so I would just say, get help, like reach out. Maybe it's not even to your, maybe you don't want to talk to your family, but reach out to somebody, call the 1-800 hotline or go to a therapist, go to a group meeting. I don't know. I... I guess if I had, if I were to do it over again, I would have asked probably someone to stay with me in Rochester until the end of the school year. And I probably would have quit working so that I could concentrate on myself. Uh And I would have asked for help. And I would have gone to grief counseling. Losing a loved one, man, is hard. It is so fucking hard. It's still hard. I'm crying here today. And that happened in 1995. I cry about it sometimes. I'll be in the car and I'll just hear a song and I'll cry. But now it's like happy thoughts, you know? Now I'm rambling. <laughs> this was about World Suicide Prevention Day, which is tomorrow. And so, all right, no more rambling. It happens to everyone. Or not everyone. It happens to a lot of us. Please, before you think of doing it, reach out to someone and get help. Because life is worth it, and there is so much more living to do, and we got to live for the people like Sarah that was taken away from us. We got to live the life that she would want us or whoever would have. So that's my story that's not been told before. Peace and love.